So Google has gone all out on Gemini this year at MWC, despite having a huge Android presence. And the big news from that event is that Astra, yes, Astra is getting added to your phone. Well, at least it's getting added to Gemini on your phone. It'll be arriving soon, but we've seen it in action. Let's give you a full rundown. Before then though, how about you subscribe to the channel? I'd really like that. I think you'd really like that. And it helps me out more than you know. So hit that subscribe button and get more content on Gemini, Android and everything else in between. So if you didn't already know, and you should by now, Gemini is the buzzword for Android going forward. Just take a stroll around Google's cutesy little booths in Barcelona and everything was tailored to show you how potentially useful Gemini can be, at least in the right circumstances. Google is also somewhat oddly highlighting lots of old features like cast, quick share and more as part of a wider ecosystem push but yes you know these by now already from ordering an ice cream with gemini to making plans or even translating menus on the fly let's be honest for a second here these are all 100 percent controlled demonstrations of what we might do with our phones but is anyone out there actually really doing it especially with gemini i personally don't think I could rely on Gemini to do lots of things for me hands-free, at least right now. Things like send a message with daily plans or an even an important meeting schedule and be content with it. It is great to see and the entire setup is 100% catered to showcasing the full potential of Gemini and Android devices while he reintroducing some of those key features as part of the Android slash Google ecosystem, which is growing even further. And I think it's growing further through Gemini itself. The biggest and the most interesting new announcement of the last week or so was the addition of Gemini Live Astra Video. Terrible name, but it is a really interesting prospect. Now, if you cast your mind back to IO 2024, we saw some demos of Astra in action. Effectively, Astra is like a visual assistant that's really a world-facing AI and the killer application for types of AI platforms that we use today on desktop or mobile. Project Astra is able to distinguish between things in the real world, give us context, give you tips, give you clues, or even guidance. Simply as an accessibility tool, I actually think there's some really insane potential here. But it also feels like a go-between, or at least the major go-between before we get true Android XR or AI functions. At least that's the way I see it, pun intended there. That's Astra. And at least some of the capabilities are gonna be integrated from Astra into the Gemini app, at least the mobile app in the coming weeks. At MWC, we were able to get a sneak peek of the kind of things it could and will potentially do when it does arrive on your phone. The only problem was that this was a very on Rails demo. And I must admit on Rails demos are not necessarily the best way to see what this is like. This is truly tailored to ensure things go smoothly and shows Astra on Gemini Live in its best light. It went a little something like this though. In this demo, we saw Gemini was asked about some pottery, shown the bowl or the vase in question, and then asked what glazes would fit a specific interior design style. However, unlike regular text prompts, something you can do on Gemini as is, in this example, you can show Gemini these potential options, which I think is naturally gonna be that killer option. The visual context can be drilled down even further because it has screen context now to ask something like, what are the three colors you highlighted are gonna be better for a house with a red color scheme in the kitchen? And Gemini will do its best to give you some information on that. The screen context gathered from your camera helps fill in future context too. So you can afford to be a little bit more vague and let Gemini fill in the gaps itself. As I say, this was a really on rails demonstration, which I'll be honest with you, worked flawlessly. And that's not something that can always be said about these demos. However, you know me by now, if you've seen this channel at all, I wanted a closer look. So I asked to change up the questions at least a little bit to try and flummox it. Initially, Gemini was hesitant to answer, maybe a pause of around a second or two before giving slightly different answers to the new questions that I had asked, which is exponentially better than some of the demos we saw of Astra, specifically back at IO last year. That just seemed to be a very, very early into the availability or testing, public testing that is. I've no doubt that the announcement being made a few weeks before this rollout is to do things like set up the guide rails or smooth out any kinks, something which Gemini has had a problem with and Pixel Studio as well, at least over the past couple of years. That said, I will say this specific early version, at least, was able to roll with some of the punches we threw at it, not that we threw that many, something it will 100% need to do when it's out in the real world and you out there are testing it for yourself and trying it out for yourself. Just how people will use Astro with Gemini, I think remains to be seen, but we didn't get the real opportunity to see things like the live screen sharing demo. That's something I really would have liked to have seen 
as this potentially has the more useful options right now as it goes a little bit of a step further than the current circle to search functionality by allowing you to use search but to get that wider context of what's on your screen. I can imagine this being useful for things like maybe maths homework or sometimes maybe getting information on documents that you're currently filling in. Sadly, this demo was not available in person for us at MWC, but being able to have back and forth conversations, I think makes a lot more sense than asking questions about my surroundings, at least in my opinion. Gemini, Astra, or whatever Google wants to call it, it, it should be positioned as a sort of problem solver. I think that's probably what they will do in their marketing. Bear with me here, I alluded to it just a second ago. Say you have an issue with something like your PC and a blue screen pops up. I think Gemini could, or at least Gemini should be used in this context to work out the problem and then help or talk you through a solution. I guess you could apply that to things like educational tasks, uh, like maths problems, physics problems, maybe even some DIY issues, which they've shown in their visual AR demos for those AR glasses, which are not available. The downside here is just how much you're gonna be able to trust Gemini's results. I think it's pretty solid for generic talking points, but in on the whole, it starts to fall off a little if something gets hyper-specific. So in certain circumstances, we're probably gonna learn how quickly or how badly, or good, we'll be positive there as well, how good or bad they do manage to handle these problems when people start using this out there in the real world. Maybe that's the reason why the demos aren't fully stress testing this Astra function right now. And that is something that, again, you'll have to try out for yourself. And we will try doing that here on the channel in a few weeks, as it will be a few weeks before you're actually able to use the screen sharing or Astra Live video features. They're not yet available with Gemini Live. The only time frame we have right now is later this month. So that's later in March, but it could come uh, maybe a little bit late down the line as well as some kinks are found like uh, every feature that does get announced from any company out there specifically google they sometimes can put things on ice for a few weeks a little while and then release it when they think it's ready i think real-time visual search though definitely ties heavily into the upcoming ar glasses and android xr itself there were no demos for that at mwc but we were able to get a close-up with that muhan dev kit it looks nice. I don't know anything else beyond that. We weren't allowed to touch it, feel it, anything like that. Genuinely though, I have to say, it does feel like Google really isn't messing around with getting Gemini powered visual search out to as many devices as possible over the next few months as it's coming to smartphones first before those, those pieces of hardware are available. And there isn't anyone out there really making anything par Samsung, at least as far as we know at this stage. It's just, it's really easy to see why as well. It's really easy to see why they're bringing it to phones. The sooner that people actually start using this kind of function, in the wider world, I think it'll develop, iterate and improve drastically. It was impressive so far, but again, like anything, it will need to improve pretty darn quickly as people find the limits of what it's capable of doing. I think the biggest benefit in this version is that you, you need to initiate the camera access or screen sharing after launching Gemini Live. I think having a permanently world facing camera is gonna be the end goal of Google but that could be a quite a long way off and it does bring about some, um, let's just say privacy concerns or issues that Google and others will probably have to contend with as systems such as this develop and improve as time goes by. Naturally, this is completely optional and at least the initial rollout will only be for those on the Google One AI premium plan. Now that's a mouthful. Luckily though, if you have a Pixel 9, you should have received a free year of this or at least a free access to this for a year. So you'll be able to test it out once it does roll out. And we will let you know on site when that does happen. We might do a deeper dive as well into this, uh, what you can and can't do when it is available. But yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic that this is gonna be one of the killer functions for Gemini Live as right now, it, as a conversational piece, it's, it's fine. I use it quite regularly for getting certain information, but not really a great deal else. I think overall, being able to sync things with your surroundings and search and effectively get Google Lens on steroids might actually be a useful addition to your phone without necessarily needing to upgrade or do much beyond an app update or that kind of thing. I think in that sense, Google has really played a blinder in recent, at least recently with these changes as you're not actually gonna have to wait for an OS update to get what is in some ways truly next gen functionality. Will it sell Android phones? Well, probably not, but with Apple struggling to get their own AI onto their own phones, Google's getting out front and they're definitely not letting up with Gemini. I wanna ask you though, what do you think? Let me know down in the comment sections below. It's always interesting to hear what you say about Gemini because it's it, it, AI is a divisive subject, but these kind of features maybe make AI a little bit more useful to the regular person. I wanna say thanks for watching as well. And as always, I'll speak to you later.